are welcome. It's time for our very first hot topic. Well, just two weeks ago, after President Tinubu promised to unify the nation's multiple exchange rates, the CBN has reportedly directed deposit money banks to remove the rate cap on the Naira at the investors and exporters window, that's the I and E window of the foreign exchange market, to allow for a free float of the Naira against the dollar and other global currencies. We've been joined now by a financial analyst and the person of Mukhtar Mohammed to discuss this. He's joined us from Lagos. Good morning to you, Mukhtar. Good morning. Well, Mukhtar, first of all, let's give more clarity to this for the benefit of those who, who would say they are not economists. <laughs> let's give clarity to this and then we'll dive into it fully. Okay, for those that are not economic, simple terms, uh, what you buy in the black market or the parallel market, whatever name you choose to call it, is the same thing you buy um, in the official market. So what it means is very soon we have only one market in terms of price. Um, it doesn't mean that the really change might not will still be there, but it's going to be one market. What I, I can go to the banks and get my dollar at uh, Six hundred and sixty-four, like it's it closed yesterday, or I can go to the brutal change and get it at six hundred and fifty-four, and those rates will, will be market determined rate. What do you mean by market determined? Buyer sellers agreement, and that uh, the um, issue of demand and supply will come to play. So definitely, it's just like any market now. So it's just go there, you you buy without. Uh, maybe they might need some um, clarification. Maybe. If you are paying, if you are getting for school fees or PT or BT or, or whatever you call it, but then what it means now is that um, you you can actually have it at a fixed rate. Not that Malam is seven 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 fifty, and then the official window is telling you it's uh, for. Are, are we any better for it? Because uh, at the time when Malam was selling for let's say seven fifty, uh, the banks were selling for four hundred and something. And for the layman, we will think that, okay, if you want to buy, you go to the banks. And if you want to sell, you go to the malam because uh, you will maximize your profit. So are we better for it? That's what we are trying to eliminate. So it does not bring transparency. Um, you, you, you won't attract the flow of liquidity like you want to attract because you are doing that. That's the challenge. And I think that's why the, uh, the, 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 the president said we'll have a single exchange rate. It's only in Nigeria you have such a um, type of um, scenario where you have um, a malam outside the street and the banks. And so what happened is that if the banks were able to legitimately meet your supply at 471, they won't have a problem. They will have still continued with that. At the end of the day, the, the, the malam may have to draw down to meet up with the bank when you are no more patronizing them. But I think the challenge we have is what that um, we, 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 we seem not to have those available at first or thing. I remember before PT, uh, PTA used to be like a busy traveling allowance, it used to be like $4,000. Some bank brought it to 2000 Some have even taken it to 1000 because of lack of, uh, lack of availability of FX. So definitely that wasn't working. And that's why the Malan rate also was higher because in the Malan time, you, you, you get it as you want it. It seems more or less like the Malans were having more liquidity, liquidity than the bank, even if that was not true. But what really happened is um, when you look at the SMEs, the MSCS, and also uh, maybe security traders that want 1,000, that want 2,000, the market they normally prefer is the, is the parallel market because it's easier for them to get that timely. Compared to the uh, to the um, banking owner, you have to apply for FX. You have to wait. You have to pay from F and that and that. So that did not help their case. So most of them were going to that space, and because CBN was no more supplying to that space, demand on that space was high, but supply on that space was not high. So that's why you saw those prices going up. All right. Well, the I and E window, which is just one of the windows, has been described by some as the corruption window that made people billionaires overnight. However, this policy has been described as just one step, one step in getting the economy out of the deep hole that it's been plunged into. Uh, the next challenge should be to prioritize the supply of dollars, isn't it? 
Well, I don't agree with the, the one that I said that the IE window was the most transparent window and it's a market determined window. I think the one that made people billionaire overnight is the parallel market, especially the time that the CPM was intervening in that space. The IE window have their own challenge. Remember that um, I don't think so much fraudulent activities were being perpetrated in the IE window because that was a market determined window. The price was fixed. Uh, you get direct supply from the uh, from CBN or you don't have it. For the um, parallel market at that time, you know, there was a lot of I mean, CBN will supply $200 million weekly, and yet the, the, the exchange rate was still going high. That's why they were supposed to just make a different of three naira. So I, I don't think the IE window, the IE window, remember in 2017, we're in a situation that like what, what we have now, whereby the exchange rate was going high and the CBN came up with the IE window. It was that window that stabilized that exchange rate up to this moment before we had the COVID pan pandemic and everything went the other way because of um, we were not attracting more liquidity into the system. So I think the only thing is that we, we, we at the point we have too many windows. We have the IE window, we had the RX 200 or window, we had um, um, the the um, uh, a lot of windows are just coming in from 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 CBN. At the point we even have the hash window, how much you give to pilgrim, at what rate you give to them to travel. So I think all those were the ones that were really breeding um, corruption. So like you said, the, basically my challenge is will we be able to meet demand if we're able to meet demand in terms of supply to those that need effects generally the market will stabilize that will happen uh, when we in 2017 because they were able to meet demand so the market st stabilized but will we be able to meet demand now i i i we need to wait and see how that plans out because if you are going by the data that i got from the ie window yesterday it shows that um we we we, we are on the right track because we started um, at 500, 471, it went to 500, it went to 750, and it closed at 6, 6, 664. And the good news about it was that liquidity was high at 68.3%, and all those liquidity were met, were met. And even forward liquidity, what we call forward um, transaction, was mean that, okay, we don't have it now in future, maybe two weeks next week, came down by almost 31 percent so that shows that there was enough liquidity to meet demand in the IE window i think for me that was uh, that shows that uh, uh, we might be heading to the right direction especially if we can maintain that uh, supply even if by that the 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 uh, the foreign reserve came came to a low of um, about 36.42 uh, billion um billion dollars so we need to again supply to those reserve and what this will do is that we may attract foreign investors, both portfolio, direct foreign investor, Nigeria in the diaspora, because some of these people won't want to bring their money. They will find other ways to remit their money. So, but with this now, I think uh, it's going to create a, a very a level field and transparency will be seen there. Where, you know, we have issues whereby, as they say, that a particular businessman were giving effects at official rate. Others will not be given at that rate, so supportive of one business to the determinant of the other. So now, um, the field is clear for everybody to apply for your FS, get it. And if you have a means of bringing in FS offshore, go ahead. And that's what we expect the banks to begin to do, because they have not been asked that they should also can begin to uh, sell FX to their customers. And that means I can walk into the bank in an FX section of the bank and do my transaction and get my FX and then uh, move in and pick the transaction fee which is what is obtainable in any part of the world. So market forces determining the rate? It definitely. So, but what forces. does this mean for the value or strength of the Naira? Is it appreciating or depreciating? Because as it stands today, it has already caused the biggest fall in Naira's history. You see, it depends. You can say um, it's the value, but you can say it's price mechanism. What we mean price mechanism is that we are beginning to get the true value of the Naira. It's not um, like what the government will say, oh, we have uh, devalued the Naira to so so amount so that we could be able to meet liquidity. No, at this time, now, like you say, it's market determining rates. Um, it, it must have taken a fall of about 42, some, uh, 42%, like you said. But again, remember, before the before then, it was, the fall was higher than that, at 7 at 7 7.55. So definitely, we'll see the up and down. Then at the point, we have the balance, especially when there is liquidity in the system. My main challenge is, do we have the liquidity? If we have the liquidity, then we will we'll, we'll achieve this unified exchange rate. But if we don't have that liquidity, the Naira may take a lot of parting in the, uh, when market forces have to determine the price. But again, again, not, let's, let's not forget that 
No CBN just floats its currency, especially in the developed economy. There are times that we expect the CBN to uh, intervene in the market with liquidity to make sure that the market is maintain stability. That will be done. Uh, hopefully, I think that will be done so to maintain stability. Now, what it is of thing when we had that long stability from to 360 was because CBN has a weekly uh, intervention about 200 million dollars, 200 million dollars that the share between bureau they change, even if that was insured in a lot of corruption. But now, if you are going to distribute such money, you know you are distributing it to the banks, you know you can monitor the banks, you know you you you, you know that that could also bring stability to the banks and there will be rules whereby the banks, in case the banks fought that, most of them will be sanctioned. So yeah, I think it's a win-win situation as it stands now. There was pressure on the banks, there was pressure on CB and there was pressure on the uh, Bureau de Change. And uh, uh, I'm just wondering, with, with a, an economy like ours, which does not uh, produce that much and export that much, uh, how will we source the 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 dollar to float in the market for everyone what's the modality okay i i think you see the challenge is that it's not that we are not exporting but you need to look at the export uh, template that was uh, embarked upon by cbn it was not transparent that we were not encouraging exporters to bring in their efforts especially in the non-oil sector because you are telling them to bring their uh, bring in effects they will, they will transact transaction with Naira, you, you exchange it at for something, and then they will go out, they will they will expect them to bring in that FX and bring it at for, for something. So one of them, most of them find a ways around it because again, the FX that the, the municipium was not able to meet all their demands. So there were some of them that have to um, uh, search for FX at 751 or 750 from the parallel market especially maybe in the area of buying one equipment or the other because cbn was not timely in bringing out or uh, uh, giving them uh, fx so they were not encouraged to bring their fx into the market so what will happen now because it's a market determining price you may see them begin to bring in fx that will attract liquidity into the system hopefully and that is the non-oil sector because it has been one sector that has been we have been striving under the previous administration. And with the kind of policy this administration is priding itself with, we could see its striving move. Then secondly, we need to increase oil production. We have not been able to meet our quota. If we are able to meet those quota now, then again, we have we have the security challenge to make sure that oil tariffs are not as, uh, as rampant as they are. Then we will attract more efforts in the system. Remember before, we have to attract more efforts. Where we attract, in terms of FX payment, we lose in terms of uh, importation of refined petroleum product. That is no more uh, obtainable. So with those two, then, then you attract FX. Then secondly, um, thirdly, I mean, the foreign investors will begin to come, whether portfolio, whether foreign direct investors, they will begin to come. Then Nigeria and diaspora will also begin to do remittance into the economy. So we have a situation whereby I think we are, we are on the right track, like I said, in terms of attracting efforts into our economy, liquidity. I think those are the ways that we are thinking of attracting liquidity. And with the policy thus far, I think it's possible for us to do that. Are we looking at a possible review of the exemptions that led to the pump price of petrol and a possible increase in the cost of petrol here? Yes, um, I looked at that yesterday, and I, 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 I mean, in the serial program, I brought that out. But again, when we look at the template, uh, the template at that time that the, the NMPC did their their, their uh, price was about six hundred. So if we are doing six hundred and then sixty four, there might be a slight increment. But again, like I said, this market determined that's not the fixed rate. We could get a rate up to. Um, 650 or 630. Remember before now, uh, daily trust have said that the CBN will want to peg the exchange rate at 630 at the import export window. Hmm. So we might be seeing a truth in that now. That's where we are moving to. Because it was then uh, denied at that time. You know, in Nigeria, there will always be a denier. But you remember that daily trust came out that they stand by their news, that yes. by their by their news, and nothing happened. And uh, so you could see that. I'm just saying you could see that getting to that point. Then when it comes to um, uh, uh, PMS, remember, it has to do demand and supply. As it stands now, it's all about demand and supply. If you are getting more demands into the, you are get, putting uh, a lot of demands into the market and a lot of people are coming for supply, then you could see. But now what you mean, but now if you look at it, 
even the petrol stations, if they have been complaining that there have been low patronage. So there's not so much demand of, of petroleum products because Nigerians are finding an ingenious way of uh, adapting to the new strategy. You don't have to go if you, unless you have to go and that. So demand and supply will always play its role there. I, I'm not expecting any major increment from NPC as it stands now because I'm sure most of their products that they imported into the country, like they always say, will last for the next one to two months. So, and they imported it based on that template of 600 uh, uh, Naira, uh, the exchange rate. So we might get that at that price, but if you're having new import into the system and the rate is, they're importing it at 670 or 700, then the, the, that, tribe, uh, that price fluctuation will come to be. Remember the whole idea of, of, of uh, deregulation is that market forces also determine prices and other variables come to play. Okay, until, as, we as begin to, until we begin to uh, meet our local refining uh, uh, petroleum consumption, we'll continue to have this challenge. But by the time we begin to meet local consumption, we could see a stability in that. Even if Dangote will be buying at uh, all the NMPC or Dangote or whichever refiner we have, buy, we have, will be buying at a particular rate. I mean, they will be paying the, the Nigerian government in dollars. But again, there are other variables like some of the charges that it's obtained when you bring in this refining product will be cut off and so we could have the price come down. But as it stands now, as long as we're importing and if we continue to import, once there is a, a, a deep in terms of the exchange rate between the Naira and the dollar, definitely the price of a, a, a PMS has to go up. Okay. As we talk about dollar <clears throat> in Nigeria, uh, the Kenyan president wants sec less circulation of dollars in Africa. Uh, is that something we should be looking at or we should still be talking about dollar, strengthening dollar, Naira prices and all that? What's your take you on see, this? Our, our politicians, uh, African politicians are very sensational. You know, so when you come up, you just feel, oh, you could just make a sensational statement without even looking at the structures or looking at whether how working it is. I ask one question, how many transactions does Africa and Africa has within themselves in terms of trade transaction? So when you are saying I should trade with you with my local coins, how many transactions do we have with Kenya? In Nigeria as the largest economy in Africa. I think one of the only major transactions we have in Kenya with Kenya might be with Kenya Airways coming to Nigeria. Outside that, there's really we go to one place you see made in Kenya goods here in Nigeria. So the way they say such things, they, they just say it and they don't look at the technicality of the work. Sometimes you have those uh, uh, you could have those local currencies like what we have with the, the Eurozone zone because of what? Because of the trade volume that they do within themselves. So as long as Africa as a nation is not trading more within themselves, it will always become a mirage for you to be saying, okay, I bring my Naira there, you get your Kenya. So how many of Kenya goods will come here for me to get um, Kenya, um, Naira, um, um, uh, uh, I mean, the, uh, with the Kenyan shillings turn to Naira, and then how many of Nigerian goods will go to um, Naira, will go to Kenya and turn to Kenyan shillings? And how much of that will be accepted all over Africa? So we mustn't deceive ourselves. It's not workable now because we are not doing much trade within ourselves. Okay, uh, Mukhtar, before we go, um, for the Nigerian who does not really need Forex for anything, the only thing he'll probably be hearing is that, so this is going to make feel go higher now mm -hmm. <laughs> how do you explain this to him that things are going to get better how do you allay his fears well i think for the other nigeria wants one thing they always say is that they want supplies to be steady and so we will see the for a consumption we see that supplies are steady now with this policy will he raise uh, 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 cost of goods and services ordinarily it should not but you know, they say it's only in Nigeria that things go up and never come down. Now, let me give you the scenario. Most of the manufacturers that brings in goods into Nigeria bring it at get their efforts from the parallel market at 750. So that's why some of these goods are very high. Now, if you are going to get that good at a lower rate, which means that you can get to the bank or you get to the IE windows, or even go to the parallel market, the Malan, and get it at 650, 630, or even at the current rate, 664. Ordinarily, that means the cost will have to come down. So it's a Nigerian problem now. 
and they are those traders are the capitalists in the market ready to bring down their they are there to ready to minimize profit or they still want to maximize profit and again it also also depends on how much you got your goods when it was coming in if you got it at 750 before you begin to say you want to begin to enjoy the rate as if those goods has to be finished so uh, but the long and short of it is that at at, at um in the short term we could see those fluctuations but in the long term we will have stability we have price then you'll be able to price stability will come once you have stability in the exchange rate then you have price stability and once you have price stability then the ordinary nigeria will be able to, to to plan and remember government is still saying that we are going to increase your salary and we still have the monster inflation that we are dealing with. We've not even talked about that one. So there's a lot and lot of what government should do. There's but they are, they are, I, can't, I would say that they hit the ground running. They are hitting the right buttons as it stands now. Yeah, that's a good place to stop it. Uh, there's a lot to do. They are hitting the right buttons. And we're watching and we're, our fingers are crossed. Thank you so much, Mukhtar Mohammed, for your time and insight on this topic. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Mukhtar Mohammed has joined us to take a look at uh, the, the Forex and the new policy concerning it from the CBN. You're still watching The Breakfast on Floss TV Africa. We'll be back with our second hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>